love it. Hey, hey, welcome to our podcast, I guess our video channel, whatever we want to say here. It is uh, off the air and on the record where we take uh, radio DJs from across the world uh, and uh, we just have fun conversations with them. Uh, we are your tag team partners here. It's uh, Marco and Danny, both. As far as I still have done a lot of research, uh, the only two brother and sister morning show uh, people on the face of the planet. Now, granted, we don't do mornings at the same place. That would be the next thing. That um, would be the next thing. But I think we just we run with it now. We've checked run with it, it all now. out until yeah. somebody tries to negate that uh, or metal. Or dethrone honor. us. Yeah. yeah we, we just did. I called a Guinness Book of World Record. They have not called back, so it's not official that we're the only brother and sister that are live on morning shows. Uh, I do mornings at K100 in Toledo, and Danny is the morning person at uh, K103 in Frederick, Maryland, who just had a, a very good ratings output. Congratulations on your yeah. number one Thanks. ratings. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's going on with you? Anything big? I'm excited about tonight because uh, this is um, not only a friend of both of ours, uh, but yes. uh, somebody that's done a lot in radio. So, uh, And I say that every single podcast. I know, but, it's, but uh, I, I think with this one, I'm really excited because this one person, I think, if I'm not mistaken, has known you the longest as far as radio career and myself as well. So this takes us all the way back to kind of the beginning. Yeah, uh, which is really uh, quite exciting. And he's had an awesome career, which is still going. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, me too. Make sure you hit share, like, and follow if you're watching this when it's not live. You can always uh, leave comments. We try to uh, get back and make sure you forward this to all your friends. And if you have a suggestion for somebody that we should talk to that you've loved or maybe you wonder where they are now or you've listened to, uh, I know on the horizon, I can't say we're working on a few people that are going to be just phenomenal. Can't wait for oh, that. Yes. So, uh, this is my my favorite podcast of the 12 that I do. This one is uh, is my favorite. So it's yeah, a good to I always stay the same. Yeah. So I love it. So all right. Well, let's do it. Uh, his uh, I, I don't know if we give his real name out. His name is Bob. We'll just say Bob. Uh, he's super excited to be here. We can't wait to have him on and we will take him off the air and put him on the record next. <laughs> And late. Oh, you do have Bob. I wasn't sure if it was going to be rocking Bob Miller because that's how I knew you. Or if you <laughs> went back no, to just as a matter of fact, I hate to tell you if you're saying that Danny's show and key one Oh three beat mine. I'm done. Well, well, okay. <laughs> Specifically I'm here. <laughs> no, I will say Bob you uh, brought me on. Danny goes, we just beat them. I want him on <laughs> so I can rub it in their face. <laughs> Now, uh, uh, to, to be fair, in uh, in all fairness, uh, Bob is number one uh, with people 68 to 90 <laughs> yes. uh, that listen during the Ooh, day. Sorry about that. So That's me. If you, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know. I, I would just say, that, you know, there's so many. Listen, ratings are like anything else. You could point uh, to anything and be like, Always hey, find a sweet spot number one. for sure. Right. Yeah. I'll tell you uh, You this. know what? If you live by the ratings, you're going to die by the ratings. Of course. And Absolutely. I don't do that. That yeah. is the number one rule. And I will say this. Uh, there's no one who's been in the business longer in this area uh, than you, my friend. And congratulations for an awesome career that continues even from afar. I love it. Yeah. No, I, you know, I've been blessed to be uh, at one station for almost 29 years. And uh, it has been an amazing career. I, I work in an amazing market, as you know, Danny, and, and Marco, as you do, too, because you used to work in the market as well. Uh, you can't beat Frederick. It is a beautiful town. It's a beautiful area. Yeah. And it is a great radio market. Absolutely. Yes, it is. It's so, uh, and it's where I grew up and really started to listen to and, and really get into radio. And uh, speaking of that, I was, uh, you know, I was 16 when I started in radio. And just about that time, maybe just a, a few uh, months or so later, I did meet you. And you and I have, uh, have, uh, connected and i think danny's right i think i've known you know there's a, another guy we'll be doing that I, it's billy is almost as long i think but um yeah it's great you were a great mentor billy brown? Teaching, yeah billy brown yeah. downtown <laughs> billy brown we're trying to get him on and so I, I know it's close for both of those but uh well let's walk through your impressive resume you started uh, did you start at the queen of country music no i didn't, didn't. i All actually right. was a high school intern at 14 ZYQ. Yeah. And Z104. Kima I know, Joe uh, and the likes. And I was a high school intern. 
And when I graduated, they hired me to do part-time work. And at that time, they wouldn't let anybody on the air unless you had like a super resume. And I'll, my mom, God bless her, she's still alive, but she went and talked to Kimasabi Joe. Well, you had your mom I, go to the radio station. I had That's my mom go, she did it without me knowing. <laughs> I mean, I was 17 years old, and she, you know, I'm like, I want to be in radio. And she wanted to know if I had a career. And Kimasabi Joe, God bless him, he said, I don't think Bobby has what it makes, what it takes. <laughs> and he's been right for almost what 40 years now. So there you go. <laughs> and uh, I tease him all the time because we're very good friends, and I tease him all the time about that. But uh, I, I started there. I went to uh, Steve Rock and Roll Brooks. Uh, Steve Dreppard hired me over WTTR in Westminster, uh, Carroll Community Radio. Um, are we being open and transparent? I mean, we don't have podcast. I mean, you can, but I, mean, I got fired. I got fired oh. for um, typing up a resume overnight and maybe. <laughs> Maybe grabbing something out of the back of my car and having a few sips and left the bottle there. Uh, <laughs> You're not the there, only one. I went to uh, uh, 98 YCR in uh, Hanover, Pennsylvania, then over to QCM in Hagerstown, uh, out of QCM. And then I came back to QCM for a while, then went to uh, 14ZYQ. Uh, no, I'm sorry, WQSI, AM820, did country music. You know, and every time you got out of the business, you know, I sold cars. I did other things. I worked for my dad. You know, that's the radio business. And yeah. uh, I finally I got a sales job and I was doing radio sales. And, and Danny might be able to attest to this. I hated it. Oh, I, I was ra awful at sales. Radio sales is a tough gig. And, <laughs> oh, there, I am. there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a QCM days. Look at that hair. Well, you yeah. know. When you're just posing for a, a picture outside and you have headphones on, you were made to be a DJ there. <laughs> right. I mean, I, you just uh, like, hey, in case I have to do a remote, I've got headphones. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> the, the guy standing beside me is Dave Shepard. And Dave Shepard is no longer with us, but oh. he was notorious for wanting to talk up an intro, no matter how long. <laughs> and we were both working at QCM, and he talked all the way through Miami Vice theme. Which he, doesn't have any words. It doesn't have any words. <laughs> and he talked all the way through it. I'm That's like, great. Dave, hey, that, does, that doesn't have. He's like, dude, I hit the post. Best. You're like, well, the, the song is over. Hit, brother. Like, <laughs> oh, that's great. So and then uh, I, uh, I ended yeah. up, um, I was selling, I was selling and a gentleman who uh, was a salesman at uh, WFMD. And he was over, I think he was over at Z, I'm not sure about Z104, but he, his name was Joe Pinto. Oh, uh, yeah, he, he was at Z104 when I was yep. there. And he yeah. did, uh, he was the general manager of the Freddie Keys, but he also did sales uh, at one time for um, WFMD. And he said, Hey, I just want to let you know that I had, there's an opening here. We're doing news talk now. And I said, Yeah, I heard it. And he goes, Well, one of the guys in the afternoon, they don't like him. They're going to fire him. You want to go apply for the job? And I did. And that's a great story if you want to hear good stories. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I was trying to do something that was out of the ordinary. So my dad is a veterinarian, was a veterinarian, God rest his soul. Um, and he was castrating a dog. And I said, <laughs> hey, can you save those for me? And he's like, save what? I'm like, the testicles. The save the ball. testicles. Right. He goes, what are you going to do with them? And I said, don't worry about it. Just put them in some formula and let me have them. And he did. So back in those days, you didn't have MP3s. You had cassette tapes. So I sent a cassette tape. I sent my resume in a box with a dog testicle, and you and Shut you opened up. up you, yep, nope. You opened up the box, and and it said, "I would give my left nut to work here." And when you open it up, and it's, I said, "And here There's it is." There's no way you did that. <laughs> you absolutely did it that. Is absolutely really did best that. Story. And he, the uh, Mike Gibbons, called me up, and he goes. Dude, I have got to meet the guy who's going to send me a testicle in the mail. Dude, that is like, boy, that I should have done that. But that you could do a Z. That's a Z one hundred or a, or a Miss sure. LA deal. That that's that would have been good. That's a great one, man. I can't that believe I never thought of it. Of course, yeah, I didn't well, have access to dog balls, but well, no. Well, I mean, that, that does help. <laughs> it does help. Awesome. Uh, so, uh, so FMD made the call. You went over now. Uh, so at that, at that point you'd been on a music station your entire yes. life. And, yeah, I had, and I had never done talk radio and we were horribly bad at it. 
And it was it it's, was it's tough like, to I mean that's a transition that's big that's huge oh, I mean you go from talking for 19 seconds to 19 minutes probably right and you know the 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 difference with talk radio that learned more than anything else was that if you play a song Marco you're you're doing country music so you know you play a song somebody who doesn't like it they might go punch out or whatever if you have an opinion and somebody doesn't like it man they hate you and they will <laughs> yeah. write you they will tell you and it's like wow. Somebody doesn't like me. I wasn't used to that in music radio. Not at yeah. all. I was yeah. always used to everybody liking you because you're the guy who, you know, you made them feel happy. You're playing their favorite playing song. Their songs, you're giving them a chuckle. Taking their requests. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, playing it's games, funny. having fun, and yeah. talk radio is a different animal. Yeah. I, so I'm living that life now because, of course, I still stayed in, in music radio where everyone loves you, but I also have a very popular TikTok channel, which is about motorcycles, which is what I love. Hey, and hey. every I have a ton. of. So I finally got a massive. I think I have like 48,000 followers on TikTok. Wow. Every one of them hate me They because I'm constantly talking about stuff in the news with bikers. And, and they all I mean, all my comments are like, you're a dick. Stop. <laughs> Doing this, no one likes you. I'm gonna come and beat you. I mean, dude. So, so it's like I'm like, wow, but these people actually hate me for just right? yeah. talking about stories that are already out there. Not not as venomous as uh, the people that don't like you. You know, because what you said is they get mad, but guess what? They still do. They still listen. Yeah, that's you yeah. know, that's that's the yeah. whole that's the whole gig of radio, right? Yeah, getting them to listen to you and not Marco, not Danny. Get him listen to me, Bob. Yeah, that, I mean, right. that's the business that we're in, yeah. and and we all do a good job of it. Yeah. Well, let me ask you. So, going from how how was that learning curve to go from a music format to a talk format? And were you interested in the in the content you were doing at the time, or is it just something you've grown into and and molded? Absolutely, had to grow into it. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but when I get into a format. I immerse myself in that format. Yeah. So I, I was in top 40. I've been in rock and roll. I've been in, you name it. And I've immersed myself into it. I don't, I'm not there anymore. And I'm into, I'm into news talk. I'm talking about what the people are seeing. I see things. I talk about things that I actually see and I actually what's in the news. I mean, so what we try to do at WFMD is, I mean, we can't compete with the bigger stations down in Washington, DC. So for people who might not know, um, Danny and I both work in a market that's about 50 miles from Baltimore and Washington. If you did a triangle, you know, we're at the apex of it. Yeah. And uh, we have stations that have million dollar budgets, uh, millions of dollars. I mean, you know, one station that I compete with was at one time the top selling uh, station in the country. They had a lot of defense contractors who were, you know, billing on their station. So we have to try to stay very local. And right. to do that, you know, you immerse yourself in the community and we have a great community and trying to deal with the people who are right here. Then we do, yeah. you know, we try to go down the road a little bit. And then if we have to, you know, D.C., not everything, not every day is a home run in Frederick, Maryland. So you no. have to reach out and find <laughs> different things to yes. talk about. Yes, that's exactly that's exactly it. And, uh, you know, I think I, I, have you found as you've gotten older, have you've kind of been more formulated in some of the things that you're, cause I know for me, uh, I listen to news talk now would have never done that in my twenties or early thirties. You know, it, it's something that I'm more attuned to wanting to be more knowledgeable and kind of find out what's happening in my world. Have you found that too? You know, I'm gonna, again, don't let my bosses see this. <laughs> <laughs> I, we are, I we mean, are live. I will. Remind I know you. <laughs> they're not. Listening. They're not watching. They don't listen. They don't watch. Um, <laughs> I, I find myself tuning into the things that really make a difference. Right. There's so much garbage out there that I'm just like garbage in, garbage out. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. And I'm yeah. getting really tired of that. I'm getting. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example today. Of course, what happened down in Alabama uh, and Montgomery, where you saw the dock worker getting beat up. And so some guy calls up and says it's all racial. And I'm like, how do you know it's it's not racial? Well, it's white guys beating up a black guy. And I'm like, it was drunken pontoon guys being told by the dock master to move so they could dock a different boat. How do you know that wasn't it? And he goes, right. well, it's all racial. And I'm like, dude, I, I don't have time for that anymore. Yeah. If it I'll, is I'm racial, then I'm yeah. on it. But this right. was not. 
At least on the opinion. surface, if you just look at it, low hanging fruit, sure, you look at yeah. a thing and see black people, but it's not. You're exactly right. It was just dumb people being yeah. dumb, right. and then and then so you try to make a, a story out of something that's not, and then we have enough trouble in this country as it is. Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't know how you because obviously you become more political. I think the uh, the more you live on planet Earth, um, but I don't know how you you because. Know, you have a certain side. Do you try to cover both sides? Or are you like, this is the way I think about it. You don't like it. I don't care. I'm not covering the other side. I, I don't try to be Mr. Moderate all the time. I would be honest with that, but I will. Um, I used to have a partner. He moved on to Indiana, to Indianapolis. Um, but he was very extreme far right. And I'd be like, now, hang on a second, pull the reins back just a little bit. I try to be more common sense. Um, yes. Are there things that I see that I'm, I'm, I really am against. Yes. Um, but I do try to um, make it plausible for either side. Now, right. I am a I am a right leaning guy and I, mm. I don't make any bones about that. But I've always said and you go back and read any articles and you guys will attest to it. You're all morning people. Even while you're doing country or if you're doing, you know, top 40, um, middle of the road, uh, whatever it is, soft rock, whatever it is. My job as a morning guy, and I think you guys would all say the same thing, is get you up, make you happy, get you down the road, and tell you what's going on in the world and make you laugh a little bit. That's my job. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. not trying to change the world. I'm just trying to yeah. make your world a little bit better. Yeah. And so you take that philosophy from, from top 40 and just bring it right into the talk world. Yeah, well, I mean, if you listen to news talk radio right now, it's just a variation of top 40 without the music. It really is. I mean, you have um, I, how many people are on your show, Marco? Uh, we got uh, two. OK, J you yeah. and somebody else or two more yeah. people than yourself? Yeah, yeah, just two. well, it depends. Sometimes we have another person in there, but mainly it's just two. And it's just you and Dina, right, Danny? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so if you listen to, I, I listen to stations down here in Florida. I'm in Florida near Orlando, and I'm listening to the, some news talk station, but they're FM talk, and people talking over each other all the time. Yeah. And they're just, you know, they're trying to outdo each other, and I'm just like, that just doesn't work for me. But, I mean, yeah. it, makes the, it makes people happy, I guess, and people want to tune into that. Um, and so, you know, I'm doing a doing pretty much a single show right now. We just hired somebody new who is uh, we're trying to work him in and uh, he comes from a music background and he a uh, nice guy. I uh, love him to death, but he he's used a music to be background. one of my street teamers. Oh, really? The, yeah. guy's got, the guy's got arms on him. Like he this. does. He's a yeah. beast. Really yeah. nice guy, yeah. but he's, you know, he's early. He's kind of like top 40 when we all got in it. Right. Yeah. Marco, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah. it up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, do you find uh, the, at this place in your career where you're you're um, you know you're set, you're you're good? Do you would you pull the uh, the mentorship, or would you be more like Brett Favre was to Aaron Rodgers and be like, "Hey, bro, sink or swim." I'm not really. I don't have time to train you as well. Or is this something because you've been through exactly what he's going through maybe 20 years ago, but uh, but yeah. obviously lived that life. Yeah, I think that I, I hope to play that role, mentor him a little bit and let him be his own person, but kind of give him some guidelines and be like, hey, we might need to do this. You might need to do that. Think about this as you're going in, because um, where we are, we have a lot of elements happening in an hour. And yeah. so there's a lot of moving pieces that he has to take care of. And I've had people uh, who have tried to fill in for me who have walked off the air because they couldn't handle it. They just yeah. left. They left the building. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like I can't. You got this guy's got live reads. He's got traffic hits. He's got two people coming in. I he's yeah. Got I mean, there's a lot. There's a yeah. lot. And I mean, you know, you're not yeah. even talking about when the snow comes and you've got to do cancellations and things of that yeah. nature. So there's a lot of moving pieces. But I am. I would love to be that person because I think that that's what's missing in radio. Mm. I really want radio to go back to being what it used to be, you know, interesting talents, being able to say a, a lot of stuff in just a small amount of time and having fun. I don't know yeah. if there's a lot of people in radio that are having fun anymore. Yeah, yeah. no, it definitely has changed. I mean, it's changed, obviously, but that's really one of the questions we get to. Um, we try to, you know, you've been doing this, uh, I mean, through the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and now uh, in, into this. So what what is the oh. big change that you've seen uh, in the long time that you've been on the radio. I mean, is it, I mean, it's just, is a different beast. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, you know, corporate radio, 
Uh, it used to be mom and pops everywhere. Um, yeah. I, I worked at I worked when I worked at ninety eight YCR. The owner John Bear lived upstairs, and if you played the music too loud, you'd hear him banging on the on the <laughs> on the ceiling. Or he would come back to me. He'd be in his pajamas, and he's like, "Turn that crap down." And I'm like, "It's <laughs> vacation. Shouldn't he should like it?" I got a death threat one time there. So a guy told me he was going to shoot me. Oh my! When I walked out the door. And I told John Bear, he was the owner, and he goes, don't worry. He goes, I'll be up atop. He goes, I got a rifle, and if he shoots and kills you, I'll make sure he's dead. I'm like, thanks. I, I mean, you're that. still going to die, but yes, the good news you're is. You're going to die, but I'm going to take him out. <laughs> and so, so you the- know, I, I, I worked for mostly um, sole owners. Yeah. Uh, my entire career until I got to WFMD, and then we've been sold I don't know how many times. Um, and you just kind of have to get used to the corporate world and people from other parts of the world coming in and telling you how to do your business at your station. And yeah. I got the money thing. Um, I will say that working in corporate radio paid me a lot more than working for mom and pops um, because mom and pops tried to you know, take most of the profit. At least they tried to put some back in. So, and then automation, I mean, I used to play 45s and albums and then cards and then CDs, and now everything's off a computer. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's well, going the- back uh, to YCR, because both of you, uh, you and I, you actually got me a job up there. It was really my first kind of, uh, you know, I, I actually, when I graduated high school, I started overnights uh, there, um, thanks to you. But that station, number one, it's, it was on like a little dirt back road. So anybody that wanted yeah. to come there, it was going to be real easy to kill you, actually. Right. Um, and then you also- could get caught by the train. Yeah, there was a there train. Was a train there. is in Hanover, Pennsylvania, and the potato trains would roll in and stop at the potato chip factory, and yeah. you could be stuck there for hours. And the nice thing is, doing overnights, they would. So there is a potato. Uh, potato yeah. chip, right? Uh, so his, yeah, yeah. And so they start cooking these potatoes at like midnight, and I'd be like, "What is that smell?" The door would be open on the side, and be like, "Oh my god, I I, yeah. I can't do this. It smells so good there." Uh, but uh, well, good. Well, when you uh, when you made the transition and you got into this and you found your niche, you really uh, you really hit the ground running. I mean, is it because you just were ready to do that, or is it um, something that you because uh, you've been pretty political your whole life, but not outwardly? Yeah, oh my. I mean, What's it, where's this from? That's C one hundred and four during a Christmas cash for kids. I was at eighty two Q and oh uh, yeah, in the closet at eighty two Q. Yeah, the closet. The closet. Yeah. I give you a gr- I say here's a great story about um Z104 82Q. They were in the biggest dump that I've ever been in. It yeah. was a, it was really a hole. So How about the program to- director's office which is a like a hall closet really. It was. Right. It was and so yeah. and so they took off a little piece of the newsroom and made it 82Q Studios. So you had to walk through Z104 yeah. Studios. You, you had to walk through the, the studio, by the way. Yeah, yeah. through the studio. <laughs> go where the uh, transmitters were. Where the yeah. car. You had to walk yeah. behind the transmitters into a little room that was really no bigger. I could stretch my arms out and reach all four walls. Oh, yeah. Okay? yeah. And then when you, during the summertime, the air conditioning was in a window, and it was so loud that you had to turn it off before you went on mic. So I had a I, our PD at the time was named Ray, and he says, "Hey, I got a kid coming in. You know, he's he's up and coming. We think he's going to be pretty big, and we want you to interview him." I said, "Okay, no problem." So this guy, this kid walks in. He wa- comes in a white van with a guy who looks like Colonel Parker, and he walks in, and he uh, we are standing really literally. So like. He's here on this side of the mic, and I'm on this side of the mic, right? And we're standing face-to-face talking. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, I said, I want to introduce you to a gentleman who I think is going to be a really big star someday, Kenny Chesney. Oh, my God. What? That is the same. I, I guarantee Kenny you Chesney Kenny Chesney before- tells, still tells that story to people, bro. <laughs> I before I, like, I, mean, I, almost, I almost kissed this man because we were so <laughs> close to each other. <laughs> well... Never mind. I won't. Because <laughs> <laughs> there was only one. Is, was a- this podcast has had Luke Katz, Ron Ross, who all went through Z104, telling oh, yeah. similar stories about the closet. And actually, Ron wasn't there, though, when the carpet was on the ceilings, like when we were there. On the walls. On the walls. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the studios had been refurbed uh, when he was there. But that's so funny. Oh I God. got a... um. Man, I got so many stories there. Um, well, you you might have been with me, Marco. 
We were there with, were you there during Truck and Tom Armstrong's days? You might have been. Mm, maybe Cat, not. I was Cat Michaels. Was okay. My, well, was Truck and Tom was the uh, evening guy, I think, at that time. Well, I went in one night and we were hanging out and there was this girl who was just screaming and yelling. They had two cases of beer in there and <laughs> everybody was having a good time. She was yelling and apparently she had, um, as Sheldon Cooper would say, coitus. In the production room with the <laughs> with the general sales manager at the time. Oh, and he, oh I don't I think he's one. with us any longer. Yeah. And oh, apparently he recorded it. Um, oh. Audio? So, or, huh? Just audio or recorded it? Yeah, no, just audio. Yeah, he yeah. turned on the he turned on the reel to reels and the microphone. <laughs> so I walk good. in the next morning and he goes, Hey, I need to talk to you. And I said, Okay. And he goes, I guess you heard about last night. And I and I interrupted. I'm like, still got the tape. I'd like to hear it <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure. Yeah, just to make sure. So, yeah, uh, you know, that's funny. I mean, you could do so many things that because I was there when the night guy, there was another night guy. Uh, and I don't know if he says his name, his name was Gary Keene. That was his really I think it was like the seventh Hollywood Sean Phillips. Because uh, yeah, that station had jing remember the jingles. Uh, you'd yeah. have your own shout, your jock shout, and uh, so, but they would never get rid of the jock shout. They would just hire new people to yeah. be the same person, and there was like nine of them. But I remember him drinking. Uh, this is the first time I've ever seen somebody get fired. So we we he was drinking. I think I probably had some drinks too, but and although I was underage, um, but then he decided to take a uh, hop on the photocopy machine and uh, Xerox his ass. You always think that's going to be a funny thing, uh, but he didn't throw. Any of that, he just put them in the trash next to the Xerox machine. So when yeah, people there you go. <laughs> the next morning, there were like photocopies of this dude's ass and beer <laughs> and beer bottles in the same trash tank. So there was yeah. no, you know, they, they were not, tra they were, they were very transparent maybe, but uh, he, he, that was the first time I've ever seen uh, somebody get fired. Now, who yeah. is this Eminem, this picture we're seeing on the screen now? Well, that's my boss. That's Frank Mitchell and myself. Mitch, we were Mitchell and Miller when I got okay. hired. We did a duo afternoon show, and Frank is a, one of the best bosses I ever had. Nice. I've only seen Frank get mad twice wow. in my lifetime. Uh, he's very low-key, super liberal guy, and he would come in with a stack of papers that would be like, you know, this big, and he just he hoards everything, and, uh, and he's like, he'll sit down and he'll go, what are we talking about today? I'm like, I don't know. What do you want to talk about? And he's like, well, I've got, and he starts rifling through these papers. <laughs> and that's how we kind of did the show for the first year, maybe. Oh, nice. We had a great interview. You remember Roscoe Bartlett? Now, Marco might not. Danny yeah. probably knows a little bit more. Uh, Roscoe Bartlett was a, a congressman from the 6th di District, and he wanted to eliminate Playboys and Penthouse from um, all the commissaries on military bases. I remember bases. this, yeah. So I don't know how we got it, but we got a Roscoe Bartlett, Bob Guccione interview on the air at the same time. And Bob wow. Guccione was the publisher of Penthouse Magazine. Yeah. Wow, and, and Roscoe, they just went at it? <laughs> it they did, well, they, Roscoe's kind of, you know, old, and I mean, he's still like a thousand years old. He's still alive. But yeah, they kind of went at it, and it was interesting. I said, well, Roscoe, have you ever seen a, a Playboy or Penthouse? He goes, no, I've never seen those. But he goes, I did see a Hustler one time. And I, <laughs> oh, I just geez, lost dude. it. I'm I like, mean, you haven't seen Playboy or Playboy Penthouse, or but a Hustler you've seen? <laughs> Jesus. Like straight, for, straight for it. Oh, right? yeah, I don't so, need yeah. weed. Just give me some heroin, guys. Yeah, we'll no just start it. right at the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. my. That was so funny. That was so funny. <laughs> oh, um, my gosh. Um, well, I mean, what is I'm the talking big... all about me, man. You guys have got great stories. I mean, oh uh, well, yeah, right? but this is not about us. This okay. is your right. office. Well, I got a ton office. of them, man. I got, <laughs> I got a ton of them. So, well, you right, just so tell me where, talk... what station you want, and I'll give them to you. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you talked about getting fired. Like, what yeah. is like one of the worst firings you've seen? Because radio has some legendary firing stories. Now, it doesn't have to be with you, but like one maybe you witnessed. Um. I don't think I've ever really witnessed one like that. I did get one. Um, <laughs> I it just was, won. I worked at, I was 82Q. I was doing mornings. I got off the air. Uh, I went into the old Kimasabi Joe office and somebody called and said, Hey, your wife's on the phone. And I said, okay, I picked up the phone and she said, Hey, she goes, I just came back from the doctor or whatever. We're going to have another baby. And I'm like, Oh my God, that's great. That's great. 
I get called in the office five minutes after I get off the phone and uh, Jim Riley, who was uh, big Ron O'Brien at the time, sat there and said, hey, how's, how's it going? And I said, it's going great, man. My wife just called me. We're going to have another baby. And he goes, oh, well, <laughs> it's going to make this a little difficult. And he slid this piece <laughs> of paper over and said that your services are no longer needed. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He goes, look, you didn't do anything wrong. We're just going broke. And he goes, you're the first of many to go today. And he goes, I wish you wouldn't tell anybody. And I'm like, um, I just erased all my tapes. I don't have anything to send out. Can I just work out my two weeks? No, we got to let you go. And that was it. I, I was cleaned out my stuff. And one of the production ladies like, I need you to cut a spot. And I'm like, yeah, I can't do it. And she goes, I need you to do it now. And I said, I just got fired. She started crying. I'm like, you know, <laughs> you're not the ones having a baby. <laughs> but, I mean, I got up and I went, I went, I went over to my wife's work. I mean, I was, I was crying and I'm like, honey, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And to her, you know, she let me wallow around for about two weeks in self-pity. And she said, are you going to get another job? I went and got another job. But that was in cars. I sold cars then until I could find something else in radio. The problem with me in radio and Marco doesn't have this problem because when he started, you know, gallivanting around the country he was single <laughs> yeah i was i was married right. i grew up here I, I you know and i always thought that this would be a great place to just live and hang out i mean i i never really thought that i was any good good enough to go down to dc or baltimore um so i survived in frederick and i you know it's been one of the best choices in my life i don't need to make a i mean who wants to be in ohio for goodness sakes Hey now, hey <laughs> now. Uh, you know it's funny. I, and again, this is not about us, but and I've said this a few times. But there's two two ways to do radio, and then and Lou Katz and you and Ron Ross, they're they're all great examples of. Listen, you like a place, you stay there, you you figure it out. The radio is a little <laughs> that's that's uh that's a good way to keep your job right there. I can tell oh, you that. That's the Chris yeah. Kringle parade. Yeah, baby, that is the sugar plump fairy. <laughs> yeah, yep. I recognize uh, that. But you, you know, you stay in one place. The, uh, the unfortunate part is yeah. radio is it will chew you up and spit you out. And just like yeah. you said there with that story, they don't care. They switch the formats. You're gone. They usually don't even pay you out of your contracts. Uh, and then the other way to do it is to to go across and be. And I think I've been in 20 states uh, where I've lived. Wow. And, and you know, yeah. and, and do it that way. But uh, and furniture. Yeah. <laughs> furniture, right? Yeah, That's what I've you had need. a purge, a purge yeah. for a few different times. But yeah, so I mean. I mean, good. You know, I would argue it's harder to do what you did than not what I did. But you, with a family, certainly not. We have been. I mean, the radio station that I'm at, okay, has three, well, two, and then me. People who've been on the air forever. If you go to our local county fair, oh, I remember Happy Johnny, and then there's the Grundoon, Grundoon. Tommy Grunwell, the Grundoon yeah. bumper to bumper road show. And yeah. then you had a couple people who kind of filtered in and out. And then it's been me for 29 yeah. years. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I consider, um, I, I, I think that I've had some staying power. Um, I've not screwed up enough to get fired. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, there's been a lot of people who have, I got yeah. my job. I got my job on the morning show because I did an afternoon show. And then I did a midday show and then I did, I got off the air and was doing fill in it production, stuff like that. And then I got the morning show after the morning guy um, went to a party. He also did sports talk in a, another market in DC, went to their Christmas party, got drunk, did something he shouldn't have, and then didn't show up for work the next day. And off he went. And I, I filled in and he called me and he's like, dude, where are you? He goes, what's going on? I'm like, where are you? <laughs> and, you Let's know, start and with I, questions for you. Right? Yeah. And then I got a call the next day, and they're like, "Hey, he's gone. You want to do the morning?" So I said, "Sure." Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, with so I ask everybody. It's obviously with the transition. We sort of talked, started talking about it, but with Spotify, YouTube, you've got all this new streaming stuff. You've got TikTok. You've got uh, all the services. I mean, we thought Sirius XM was going to be the big problem. So all of that giving radio fits do you see radio making it if so why and what changes do you if you were the the king of radio and could change everything with the snap of your fingers what would you do a little two-parter i think the biggest thing about radio <clears throat> and it's the immediacy of it so 9-11 is a good example spotify ain't gonna do anything about 9-11 um we were on it right away 
um, big snowstorm, Arm uh, Snowmageddon here in Maryland. You know, we had over 37, 38 inches of snow. Immediacy. We were on the air. We had people there 24 hours a day. And I think that that's, that's something that people can rely on. Yeah. Um, I hope a new generation finds radio. The same generation that's now finding vinyl again, I hope they find out guys who are spinning it and able to say something really cool, really neat, and something that you'll remember. I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of why I got into business. I would listen to guys, you know, Larry Lujak and, uh, you know, the guys from KBW and Buffalo and BT and Charlotte and, you know, all these WLS, all these great stations. And these guys all sounded like they were having fun. And I yeah. I kind of gravitated towards that. And I think that that's what radio will do. I think people are going to look for – intimacy and i think that radio can give that to a certain extent if people like ourselves become vulnerable and open and uh, let them in a little bit yeah yeah for sure and i think that's again uh, you know it's been a common thread with all of these um interviews that we've done or you know when we've talked to people it is that uh sincerity and and one-on-one -on -one relationship and vulnerability and connection with people if you can do that i think you're successful in long term oh, and i think the other thing pup. is when you go out that's meatball that's my french bulldog meatball meatball, meatball. <laughs> but i think that you know for morning people you know we have to be out and about a little bit and yeah. i think when you meet people you gotta say you gotta be nice to them you can't push them off yeah. shove them off I've never, I've, I've been, I've always been the king of self-deprecation. Yeah. Uh, I never want to get too big of a head. I never yeah. want to think that I am more than I am. I'm just a guy lucky enough to get up at three o'clock in the morning and <laughs> go to work and, ha and do something I've always wanted in my life. And, and I think that that's an amazing career. If you go to work now, every day, I mean, we all can attest to this every day we wake up. We don't always want to go to work. When right. I woke up from being sick the other day and sitting here and I mean, I was literally just, I'm trying to do everything I can to be on the air. And then when I was off, I was just like, oh God, I can't make this. I can't yeah. do this. I can't. Yeah. But I've, you might have done the same thing, Marco. I don't think Danny would, but I've had trash cans beside me in the past and yeah. hurling during a break because you're sick. And, yeah. But you got to do radio. You got to show up. Yeah. I mean, there. First job where you know Christmas, Thanksgiving, doesn't matter. Radio is twenty four seven, and you learn that, and and you wanted to be that way. I still am that way today. The day that I, you know, every two weeks where I see money appear in my account, I'm like, they still pay me to do this. This is insane. Right? <laughs> uh, so to me, it's it's it is a fantastic opportunity, one that I've, I'm so grateful to have. And now you've done something that uh, a lot of people have wanted to do. I have a friend that actually lives in Tampa. That's he can't move. He's got an autistic son. He's got a giant family, but. And he's been huge in radio. We interviewed him on here. His name is Marco, obviously. Uh, and uh, and and he's like, don't, he doesn't understand why people wouldn't want somebody to be able to work out of the house. So you've moved to Florida, although you're still on the air in Maryland. How has that transition uh, been different? Is it um, is it harder? Is there stuff that people might not, you know, I mean, here's a living example of it. So give us a little example of how you transmit back to Maryland and how, how that all works. Well, first of all, I mean, you run your own board, Marco? Yeah. Okay. I don't. That's the hardest transition for me is not having control. Now I can get into our system and I can hit the button and I can play something, but it's not immediate. And I, and, and we're working on that. I just, and, and I can't see it. So not being able to be in control, not being able to, um, oh man, I'm thinking of a rush song that I want to play for a bumper and grabbing that and playing it because they already got bumpers already put into the, uh, the clocks. So right. I mean, that's the hardest part. And then not being able to see people on a daily basis, not being able to go to an event downtown, you know, Baker Park on a Sunday evening, walking around, talking to all the people, the Great Frederick Fair, which a lot of times I'll fly up for, um, you know, or just walking downtown on a, you know, first Saturday or something. I mean, those are the kind of things. And seeing people, that's the biggest, the big, and the other adjustment is um, when you're, with somebody and like I had a, I had a gentleman, Ryan Hedrick was with us for a couple of years and you know, you're still on the air and you're still trying to play off of each other, but you don't see each other. So right. I mean, you're Danny, you and Dean are together and Marco, you and your inflatable person is together as well. <laughs> um, but I don't see, you know, I don't see him. So that can be a little bit of a, a, of a factor. I mean, we have zoom and we have all these other things, but I have, I, don't know, I have like 28 tabs open on my computer at one time. So I, it's hard to do something like that. But I think that's the biggest thing is just not the, 
the immediacy and the intimacy of being in a room together with the same yeah. person and knocking things off, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, that's, but it's, uh, yeah. but it's nice. I mean, my commute to work, 16 <laughs> steps. <laughs> you know? I mean, yes. I love it. Yeah, I but the show it. starts at six. You're up at five fifty. You're like, no, yeah, I'm on at five now. Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah, I, I was at, at six because that gave me, you know, when I kind of semi-retired, I was working from six. The other guy was five, and now I'm back to five, five to nine, Monday through Friday. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's so. uh, that's awesome. So, uh, give us a little bit of uh, of you know, another story that uh, really. Oh, hang defined- on, they're going to call from Belva. <laughs> 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 I'm sure she is not calling you. Uh, so how about something uh, a little bit more personal to you? Uh, no, just, uh, Blue Mountain Inn? <laughs> oh, the, yeah, boy. Marco so, and I used to run around a little bit. We did. We I, you actually let me live with you. Did I? Yeah, for a short time. Okay. Then we'll kick yeah. you out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah. you were. Well, you were in my wedding. I was. Uh, that's the. That's the picture I should have got, Danny. Yes. Is uh, yes. him and my him and our wedding with our sunglasses on. I was there know? at the wedding. We and, were cool. Uh, Marco was in it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was. You a, know, I've only been in like two or three. Her, her wedding and your wedding, and I think that's pretty much the only ways I've been in. So. Uh, you guys a are a lot of drunk people at my wedding. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. was a great day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is uh, one thing you remember now? Obviously, you, you've done, you've been a part of Christmas Cash for Kids. You, you know, so so what radio can also do, other than just being local and being fun and all that, is uh, is really find a way to touch somebody. Maybe it's a story that you never even told, but is there a time with being on the air you feel like you've really made a huge difference in humanity's sake? Or Wow. Well, other than Christmas Cash for Kids. And when you touch as many kids as we get to touch year in and year out, and we're a little AM radio station. So uh, one of your former guests, Ron Ross, um, was working at Z104, and that's where Christmas Cash for Kids started. Yeah. And when they were sold to a company that really didn't celebrate Christmas, uh, Ron and Phyllis Betson and Mark Williams brought it over to us. And I was I was dead against what they wanted to do. I wanted to do it just like Z104 did it. You know, we were going to do it this many days. We're going to do it three days, 24-7, everything. And then I go, look, that's not our audience. We're going to do it, you know, here to here, six to six, you know, go longer. And we're going to do it for five days. We're going to take a break for Rush Limbaugh. And it worked. And I realized that our audience, God bless them, are, were more affluent. So instead of, you know, Z104, it was a it was a kid station. It was a teenager station and young adult and uh, they didn't have the money. So when we were getting ones and fives and tens from these people, we were getting tens, 20s, 50s and 100s from people. And, you know, and a I, I, great story that I have um, is, um, oh, gosh, it just left my head, my head. Paul O'Neill's band, um, the Christmas TSO, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Oh, yeah. I interview him. And we became pretty, pretty decent friends. And I was, uh, they were in town to DC and I said, uh, you know, I was interviewing him. I'm like talking about, it. I'm like, I'd really like to go see the show, but I can't. And he goes, why not? I'm like, well, we do this thing called Christmas cash for kids. And I told him what it was about. And we hooked up with the Salvation Army and he goes, well, put us down for $5,000. <laughs> and I was just like, it blew me away. Wow. And I got off, I, you know, I went and took a break and I said, are you sure are you good with this? He goes, yeah. And he goes, I'm going to tell you a number to call, call them and tell them I told you so. They won't be happy. He goes, but I don't give a crap. It's my company. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I just, here's my stipulation. And it was like he wanted to hand out the money in cash to the families from the Salvation Army, $100 per family. And I'm like, I'll do whatever you want, dude. So that's yeah. those are the kind of things. And, I, yeah. and I'll tell another story. And then this one I've told on the air, but not too many times, is while I was – in the beginnings of being on the radio there, my life changed and I became a born again Christian. And I was sitting there in, in just, you know, one of my moments alone, prayer time, whatever you want to call it. And I'm like, God, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to, how am I going to make a difference in the world? What am I going to do? So the next day we're on the air and we're talking about doctor assisted suicide. And I'm like, okay. So I was talking about, I had a gentleman call me up and his name was Bob. And he, he's like, hey, I, I want you to do something for me. And I said, okay. He goes, um, I've got cancer. I've got a friend who's got cancer. We're all going to die. And he goes, and we're going to 
make a statement and we're going to go to the Capitol steps and we're going to kill ourselves. And I said, um, okay, why are you telling me? And he goes, I like you. And I want you to be the one that tells the story. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> my God, no, this is a little bit too big for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so I really, I said, I got to call, you know, I'll call you back. I called him and I, and I pondered it and I walked around. I asked everybody at the radio station and every single person said, this is your ticket to the big time. This will make you famous. And I didn't do it. And I called him back and I said, look, Bob, I will, I will pray for you. I'm sorry that you have cancer. I hope you don't go through with this. Um, but I can't, I'm not going to make you a spectacle at my benefit. I can't do it and I won't do it. And, uh, I know he didn't do it obviously, or cause it would have been a story, but, um, you know, I just, I hung up the phone and I just said, I, I, I made the right choice. Yeah. I'm maybe not going to get famous, yeah. but that's okay. But, yeah. 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 Wow. I mean, just to be put in that situation, but uh, the thing about radio is you, you know, the one thing you learn, um, you know, it's not just, even if you're on a music intensive station is that you're touching people in a way that, uh, that is, you know, it's, you know, it's, you know, I, I, TikTok basically is radio in 1990. Like you just, you're right. able to reach people to a certain mm -hmm. level. I mean, I watch people now uh, and it, it is even me that I know the whole system, how it works, but I'll watch people that I follow on TikTok and be like, and feel like I know that person, even though there's no possible way to know them. Yeah. But, right. uh, yeah. you know, I mean, so who are your take? I mean, I, I, I love TikTok. I, I, I'm, and I'm thinking that the Chinese are looking at me going, what is wrong with this guy? He looks at, <laughs> he looks at people reselling stuff on eBay. He looks <laughs> at, the, at people who barbecue and some guy who likes to chase gators around. I mean, I just, yeah. I'm not the total, I'm not the TikTok guy. I mean, I can get, I can go down little rabbit holes with TikTok, but uh, oh, for the dude, I've, yeah, mine is yeah. all filled with conspiracy theories. Uh, I like to obviously motorcycles is big for me. I love me some motorcycles, so I, I do a lot of that. But it the variety of it, it's it's so and it's actually to be honest with you, this is going to make me sound so shallow, but I'm telling you, it's really the first place I get real news because I, I feel like I haven't watched my. I, I wish I could flip my uh, my camera over i've got a tv that's a it's a 85 inch oled flat screen so an amazing tv i bought it when i first moved to toledo i think it cost me like 2500 bucks i've watched it like six times like yeah. i literally just watch my wow. phone and computer now and i get yeah. most of it you know, unless uh, unless the football you know when football season comes that's what i really watch it for because i like watching yeah. the games there but otherwise i'm on my phone constantly just getting news updates watching people and just i don't know man there's something that's well, so what? addictive yeah, one thing for me uh, with TikTok, and it was kind of this way with YouTube, kind of, you know, maybe five years ago, is man, there are some freaking talented people in this country, in this uh -huh. world, that are doing amazing things. And it just blows me away all the time. I yeah. think, Danny, that one thing when it comes to the music industry, I think that there are people out there that I have heard that are great talents that would never be able to get a record deal that because yeah. of TikTok, because of YouTube, yeah. they, they do. There's 100%. a guy, there's an Irish guy, um, something surround. So I, I don't even know his name, but he walks around and he sings the same song and he has a, he has a, a vocal group behind him and he just goes into, you know, subway stations and other things. And he, he became famous. Yeah. Uh, and I, yeah. you can hear that. And if, and if radio doesn't embrace that, if the music well, industry doesn't embrace these people who are putting great music out, then that's where they're going to, that's where they're going to miss it. Yeah. I can't tell you how many songs I discover because of TikTok yeah. being TikTok sounds trends. Not only that, uh, but, uh, but you're right. Artists now have a mm -hmm. way to make it without the record companies. Yeah. yeah, and really be in fact, and the people that are are in con like I I know for a fact um I saw a um I think it was Blink One Eighty Two or so one of the bands out now. There's a lot of them doing it, but they'll they don't even finish songs anymore. They take like fifteen songs that are only like partially done, and they stick them all out on TikTok for twenty five seconds, see which one gets a million views, and start working on that song. They're actually it's Great actually idea. a way to make music now to say like, look, I, I, I think we have nine stiffs and three good ones. Let them make it. And then they finish the ones that people like. It's insane what's going on. Yeah, yeah it's but crazy. The, the, the only downside to that is, is that if you grew up in my era 
and you got that you got that record and you were able to read the jacket and you knew where kicks ate their pizza uh, you know on a friday night after a gig uh, yeah. that's the kind of stuff that you miss and when you can hear a lyric and you're like oh i don't really understand what that lyric is or and you, go, and you can go back and read it i mean nowadays you can probably find it on the google but um yeah. you know that's that's so i mean that's one of the things about radio um that you can if you are willing to give those uh, smaller people and smaller companies a, a break. Well, that's, yeah. that's where I feel like, you know, when you were talking about like corporate radio, but you know, and thankfully I, you know, I work for a, a you know, a s singly owned uh, company, you know, and I think that the influence of consultants and research and studies sometimes needs to be pushed back on because there are days I'll come in and say, oh my gosh, these three songs are all over TikTok, which is our real demo now because it's more women my age or, you know, 25 to 40 that are on TikTok. We got to play them. We got to play them. And they fight and fight and fight. And then a month, two months, three months later, they're like, oh, we should add this song. I'm thinking, yeah, like if radio's whole thing, the selling point of radio is to be able to switch on a dime report what's happening, be current and, and kind of move with the times. And yeah, if radio doesn't embrace that, I agree a hundred percent. It's just gonna, people are going to find other ways to get more current stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's the same way with the, you know, the, the fact that there aren't places for bands to go play anymore. Right. I mean, that's how I met my wife. Um, and there's my work wife. Um, <laughs> but that's how I met my wife. I mean, I was a fan of her brother's band. And um, I followed him around town and I actually we did a um, we did a new band playoff or whatever, you know, picked a band. And I had I had his, I had her brother's band in the radio and she thought I was funny. And um, well, boy, she's not really good at talent. Judgment, right. she? Well, I know that she, <laughs> I understand that. And this is a funny thing is when um, she said, I want to meet him and he, God bless him. He goes, Linda, he's just not your type. <laughs> 31 years later, I am still not her type, <laughs> you know, love going on 32 yeah. years. I'm still not her type, but uh, I love you know, it. that happens. That's yeah, yeah, that happens. But uh, yeah, those, I mean, you know, I, I always go back to music and when I was playing it and, you know, there's an old triumph song where the ly lyric is, I hope the DJ will play my favorite song. And, you know, that's kind of what we do. That's what Marco does. Yeah. That's what Danny, you and Dina do. I mean, that's, that's your part. My listeners, are a little bit different. When people listen to talk radio, they are really listening. Yeah. There's something called um, TSL, time spent listening. Our TSLs are really big, are really high. Um, we don't have the cum that you guys probably have. I'm talking radio garbage now. Um, but, I mean, our listeners are invested. They want it. They want to hear. We are not generally a background station. And I'm not yeah. saying that that's a bad thing, but you're not going to hear us in a dentist office. Right. People so Q, Q is the uh, got to say. Yeah, Q is the actual yeah. size of the audience. Time spent listening yeah, is how much time uh, do they spend? And you're right. You're doing something now that uh, that is not like uh, do you could, there could be. There are stations literally made to be background. Uh, they're made to yeah. be office type stations that you just have on and and you don't really pay too much attention to. And you're certainly in a, an atmosphere where uh, people are uh, paying attention. Is there anything you've ever gotten in trouble for since you made it to the talk where people are like, hey man, you, we can't really talk about that anymore. Have you had any? stern talks where it looked like uh they <laughs> I, I, well i almost got fired yeah told, that's what i was getting I told, at <laughs> i told a um i told a joke that was on a prep sheet and um i i don't want to dare repeat it but it had something to do with uh i think ellen well DeGeneres we're on youtube and, now and, so and, no yeah. rosie i think it was rosie o'donnell and and ricky lake <laughs> oh boy and i said it and frank was like you're lucky you didn't get fired and yeah. I'm like, okay, uh, I, I learned <laughs> yeah. my lesson. Yeah, you're like, there's the ceiling. Gotcha. Yeah, All right. yeah. <laughs> I I try not to. I don't want to push the the envelope too far. I like my job. Um, <laughs> so you know, maybe when I was younger, I did. Um, I mean, I called one day Z104. I called down to the at that time they didn't have the the adult bookstore on Route 40. They only had the one down on Market Street. Oh, yeah. And um, I called down there one night to see, because it was hot, and I'm like, you know, how hot is it down at Bradley's bookstore? So I called him, <laughs> and I was talking to the guy behind the counter, and I'm like, how hot is it down there? And I'm like, 
you got anybody in the store? <laughs> you know, he goes, I got some people back in the video booths. And I'm like, well, let's go talk to them. <laughs> See, yeah. that's when you could do a little bit on radio. You do that nowadays, you're going to get canceled quick. Oh, yeah. 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 That's, a, yeah, cancel culture. I got no time for that. Yeah. No time. Yeah. So. Well, and that's, uh, you know, unfortunately, that's, you know, I mean, because obviously you're in a format where you have to, you have to visualize, you know, how are your words coming over? And we're so far left and right are so far apart that now central is who knows what that is. Do you find it harder to do a show in 2023 than you did in say 2015? Uh, or do you just cover different things to, to not deal with it? We're a small enough market. And, and this is where my boss kind of has some issues with where we are. Um, he is very liberal. He is very liberal. He's, I call him a socialist and that's, <laughs> that's where he wants to be. Uh, and that's fine. But he, and people yell at him all the time. I mean, he, if you were Frank Mitchell and I wish I could post it, the comments that he gets on our comment line are you're every day. You're an idiot. You're blanking <laughs> this. You're blank every single day for 20 some odd years. Now he came to FMD about three months before I did every day. He is hated. And I'm like, I don't know how you handle that. I really don't. Our station leans pretty right. So we're our P1s are are pretty loyal and pretty right. The the left wingers, they will jump on our um uh, we have a text line. So they jump on that and will be keyboard warriors because they can call themselves whatever they want to. Um, and so I mean, that's where I hear them from. And they don't normally call. But when they do, I try to engage them in a conversation. I try not to yell and scream unless they won't stop talking. Um, so that does happen. But I will try to be <laughs> nice to everybody. I'm yeah. not here to make. I'm not here to make enemies. I'm just here to give out information, have some fun. Yeah. And uh, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. We can talk about it. But then again, guess what? I can hang up on you. That's right. <laughs> that's right. You have the microphone, so that's um, right. But, uh, yeah, it's just way different than it was in, say, 1990, where you could have uh, an educated talk with somebody, maybe learn something, maybe even start thinking one way and end the conversation with, you know what, maybe this guy's got points. I don't know. I'll think about it. It just seems like that's not how it happens now. But, yeah. um, you know. And that's a, that's a shame. Yeah. Is it, is it, and, I mean, you know, look, it's it's going into your your realm, too. I mean, you know, look at that. You can't do that in a small town. Yeah, I mean, I can't open up my Facebook without seeing a T-shirt, a hat, a, a, a ribbon, you name it. Without well, you know, that and somewhere on it. Funny thing about that song is, number one, it wasn't doing good. It was actually one of his worst songs on that album. Right. Nobody was I, actually playing it. Uh, and there's a there you now. I'm all into conspiracy theories. I'm all out there. I love a conspiracy theory. The only one I don't get is flat Earth, but. All the oh, other ones, like, dude, I'm how can you not get that? <laughs> All the other ones, I, mean, I am dead in. But the the, the rumor is that uh, the song wasn't doing well, and that uh, they said, "Hey, you know what we should do is we should make a controversy." And 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 here we go. It's the number one song uh, in the country. In fact, actually, for the first time ever, uh, between Morgan Wallen, Luke Combs, and now Jason Aldean, the country charts have actually dominated the regular charts. It's never been done in like eighty years of uh, of uh, you know country yeah. music. So, uh, but it's insane. And you're I mean, right. It's not that great of a song. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's I mean, not it's really. Just, I mean, it's a good song. Like lyrically just a, speaking. Just like any other country song. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's, a, you know, that formula is great. It works for country music. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, going back to TikTok and YouTube and stuff, and Danny mentioned it. The one thing that you see is that you don't see overproduced artists. Yeah. yeah. And, I, you know, there is something to be said with a with somebody who just has a pure voice and let that be yep. heard instead of you know when you hear some of these artists and they're singing when they don't have a record producer doing all the work for them man you're like how did they're you get a record awful. contract yeah oh yeah yeah you you hear those leaked those leaked audio i mean yeah just without terrible. auto tune and oh yeah 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 sometimes yeah, they'll secretly the ones that are good and you hear them um like boston i heard um you know the acapella versions of some of the stuff that they were doing they took out all the all the music tracks and i'm like those guys can sing they're amazing yeah 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 uh, but the talent can you sing, marco can you sing i i cannot i do sing no, every morning I, I love to <laughs> sing but i cannot <laughs> sing you can ask my partner lynn she she puts up with it uh but no i i am musically uh what they call tone deaf 
Yep, me so. too. <laughs> I mean, I can't, I can't carry a tune. I, people say, well, you know, you can say, I said, no, I can carry a tune from the CD rack to the CD player. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's where it goes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so well, I'll ask you this because this uh, pertains. There's a, a funny story that was put out uh, today. I, well, not funny, but one that's just making the rounds. I want to get your opinion on it being on a talk show. So, obviously, I'm a huge uh, Washington Commanders fan. It used to be the Redskins. There was I don't know if you saw or you talked about it, but this morning um, there is a group that is going to protest the Commanders, uh, and they're gonna, and they started out with uh, you know just like Anheuser Busch has lost 54 million dollars without one brick being thrown, without one street being blocked. If we have to, we're going to bring this upon you. If and this is from the Native American nations, all 90 of them got together and said, if you do not, and this is where it gets crazy, change the name back to the Redskins. We are going to actually, um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna come down, and we're gonna really, uh, and you know, <laughs> throw it down. It's so they're petitioning them to. They got sixty-seven thousand people. This is from the Native American tribes, uh, people. Uh, what do you think about that in the reversal of fortune? Well. What I would normally say is, how about them Cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a Cowboys fan. That's why I wanted to bring yeah. this up. <laughs> I, you know, everybody's like, oh, wow, you know, the commanders now, they're going to be big. They're going to be great. I don't really care. I hope they don't win a game. No, but, they're going to they're <laughs> definitely going to beat Dallas. So, so, you no, know, man, we can do a little bet on that right now. <laughs> I, look, I, I still call them the Redskins. Yeah. They're still the Redskins to me. I mean, that's that's tradition. I understand um, I think they just have to approach it a different way. Maybe just maybe drop the red and just call them the skins. Maybe I don't know. Change them to the warriors. Commanders was a stupid name. I did oh, like yeah. those, those kind of black army jerseys that they had. And I mean, those, those uniforms were pretty cool, but yeah. Yeah. That would just be a controversy because there was that they were talking about the new ownership was going to go back to the Redskins. Well, there's been they've um, but, been talking about it, but now with this thing, this is from again, again, this isn't from Chuck in uh, in DC. This is from like the Native American tribe. And so there's 90 of them got together and said, "Listen, we want uh, because the Kansas City Chiefs, the uh, you know the they named a couple of other ones uh, that have, they yeah the brave they they see it as a uh, you know as a as you know encouragement and it's a an way honor. to be remembered and an honor, it's yeah, an honor. yeah. It's well, but see the it's Chiefs, honor, and that's what they were the all Braves. Saying, even- yeah. It was, you know, kind of a moniker with the Redskins. It's, oh, the color of their skin. And I think that that's right. what made so many yeah. people mad. I, I, yeah. I think that, look, I, I, I'm not a Redskins fan. I think that they should tear down the stadium and rebuild <laughs> RFK. Uh, that well, they might do the, that now. <laughs> that's one of the best stadiums I've ever been in, RFK, yeah. to watch a football RFK game. RFK was a great stadium. They're, they're great talking stadium. about that. That they're tearing it down, but they're they're talking about now with the new. They would never do it under the dance night here, not to turn this into a sports podcast. Uh, but uh, they are talking about with the new people coming in and being a different, a whole different uh, meaning of everything that they are. That's back on the table. So I would love to see that myself because that that was yeah. a great place to play, and I will it take was. that bet. Uh, you because, know, my, uh, uh, Mike one McCarthy of my is bosses, a clown. One of my original bosses was the voice of the Washington Redskins back in the day. Uh, oh, really, Tim Gibbons? And I have a story about that if you'd like to hear it. I know we're sure. going to go soon. Um, yeah. It was my anniversary, Cowboys, Redskins, RFK Stadium. And I was on the air lamenting the fact that I didn't have tickets. And I said, anyway, I got tickets. So I'd love to have them. I'll, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Jim Gibbons calls the radio, calls me Sunday morning at my house. And he goes, Bob, Jim Gibbons. I'm like, how you doing, <laughs> sir? And he goes, did you get tickets to the game? I'm like, no, I didn't. He goes, you want mine? And I'm like, <clears throat> um, well, is this a trick question? <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem was it was Sunday morning and we have an infant and, you know, I'm like, OK. And my wife goes, it doesn't matter. You take them even if we never go to the game. We'll drive down there and we'll get the tickets. And so I said, yes. And so he said, OK, I'll meet you. I'm at the club. I'm like, what club is that? He goes, I think it's called Burning Tree, Burning Bush, something like that. And watching in D.C. Very exclusive club. And I'm like, well, Mr. Gibbons, I have never met you because I had never met him. I said, do you look like Tommy or do you look like Michael? He goes, they should be so damn lucky. He <laughs> goes, I don't know who you are. And I'm like, how's he going to know who I am? He's never met me until I drive down the road into this country club. And there's Rolls Royces, Cadillacs, you know, Porsches and all these fancy cars. And I'm in a... Hyundai Sonata with duct tape windows because they're falling down, and he's just like waving at me. And he's like, "Here he comes!" There's, there's the coming a mile away. That's my employee. <laughs> so we get out, 
And my wife, lovely Linda, and she goes, um, I have to use the restroom. And he goes, um, it's a men's only club. And my yeah. wife looked at him. She's from Thermont. You don't take no. <laughs> She's no from Thermont. <laughs> uh, yeah. She goes, well, I don't care. I have to pee. And he just kind of fumbles a little bit and he goes, okay, uh, let me walk you in. And I'm like, dude, she's been to a concert before. She knows how it is. Uh, you know, she has to go in the men's room. She has to go yeah. to the men's room. Yeah. And so he took her to the bathroom and he goes, uh, he hands me the tickets. He goes, don't embarrass me. And I'm like, how am I going to embarrass you? I don't not gonna embarrass you. Until I realized that my seats are right behind Charlie Taylor. Oh my uh, gosh. Red so general manager. Um, yeah, General and manager, then yeah. all these reds, and I'm in my Cowboys jersey. Oh my and then god! I'm looking <laughs> down. I'm looking down and to the left, and there's Jack King Cook's box with Jack King Cook's. Holy in there. cow! Yeah. yeah. So now the, the the good news for Redskins fans at the time, they knocked out Troy Aikman on our way to the game, and Cowboys lost. Yeah. I believe that was uh, Troy Aikman's last game ever, wasn't it? No, that was against the Eagles. Oh uh, no! Yeah. I think Lavar Arrington. Lavar Arrington is later. the one that actually did put put Troy Aikman into the retirement. You remember that hit? Who? I mean, I could bring it up on YouTube if you want me to. The LeVar Arrington hit on the sideline on Aikman. That was the last hit he took. I thought that was against the Eagles. No, no, it was the Redskins. Yeah. Well, it might have been. Might have been. <laughs> might have but, been. Uh, but you and I have had many fun, fun times, obviously. being. Yeah. Uh, oh, man, fans. we've, uh, you know, we've had some fun. <laughs> we've had some fun. Some Maui well, oops, some lemon drops. Oh, Back yeah. in the day, Maui oops. Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> Maui oops. Oh, uh, yeah, dude, that'll hurt you. Absolutely, that'll, vodka, dash that'll of land you schnapps and some and land you uh, in a bar with a girl named Belva. We do not Belva, have time, for baby. That story. We do not have time for that story, <laughs> but the question look at that. is, we've, we've ran out of time. Did you folks. wake up that next morning? <laughs> <laughs> I was at your house. Uh, later i don't think so <laughs> that's, not this right here that's my brother's tell right there that's the tell oh, it does that he's lying yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay this, see. Uh, that's good that is you know good what time. i mean i will um i've known marco for a long time and uh you know he didn't wasn't always the upstanding citizen that we see here in front of you today <laughs> And uh, you know what? It's good. I mean, when people change their lives around sometimes and they, you know, go down a rough spot a little bit and then they make themselves, uh, you know, something. I mean, look at me. It's what, 12 podcasts, for goodness sakes? That's yeah. So, I mean, I do a lot. I don't get paid for any of them, but I do a lot the of them. Hustle. Yeah, the hustle. Well, listen, uh, you are a great friend. You are a fantastic radio legend. And uh, it's been super fun getting uh, to see you and hear some of the stories that I didn't even know. And we've known each other for uh, you know, geez, half a century. Almost. Oh, man, there's there, there are so many radio stories, and that's that was the great thing about radio back in the day. Yeah, you had these stories. Yeah, of you know, women flashing you out the window when you're playing a song. Um, <laughs> you know, one station we had a hot tub. Um, that was out in the front yard. That was lots of fun. And oh yeah, you know, yeah. Can you I mean, just imagine what we did through the late '80s, early '90s, uh, like, and, to, and then imagine that happening in 2023? I, it just, it's there'd just, just be it, one long line to the <laughs> HR department. <Yeah. laughs> but it, I don't even think they had HR departments back yeah. when I started working. So no, yeah, they did. It would be. <laughs> Uh, well, listen, uh, they can catch you every single day on uh, on WFMD. Is that right? On the, AM 930 the WFMD. You can find us on WFMD.com as well. Very good. Well, uh, Bob. The podcast. Or I like to call them the Bobcast. The oh, Bobcast. Bobcast. Nice. <laughs> Dan, do you have any, uh, any uh, last questions for Bob? Well, I'm just waiting for him to retire so that it, you know, opens up the uh, ratings period here in uh, Frederick, Maryland, you know. Hey, so. I just, if I could show you, I just, I, I still have to just, I haven't gotten this year's uh, plaque for Frederick's favorite radio personality. <laughs> I haven't Every gotten year. this year. <laughs> Every year when he moves year. away, he still voted Frederick's best. So <laughs> yeah. I think we're going to petition this year that no, yeah, I don't out of so. market. You I don't could, think you, so. Target, target campaign, Danny, all over Frederick. The guy is in Florida now, so let's I give know. it up. Well, it's hey, not, you know what? I hear through the rumor mill that, uh, you know, somebody else may be moving away as well, so. Yeah, she's <laughs> not. She took the house off the market. We're good. Oh, she's okay. going to stick around for a while. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't the other thing you love about radio. million dollars she wanted for it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The other now, thing about radio Look, you we are all know a, each other. a Frederick legend, uh, and... You know, I'm so 
honored to know you. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what the next 20 years holds for you. Hey, you know what? As long as they'll keep me, um, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. I mean, this is, this is such a, a wonderful ride and it's a, yeah. it's a wonderful industry. It has changed over the years. We all know, but, uh, so have we, I mean, there's a little more gray, a little less hair and, <laughs> uh, you know, everybody's got to have reading glasses. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Uh, well, but it's been fun, uh, and I can't listen to Marco because, or Danny, and because I'm on the air. Yeah. Same time. Uh, but yeah. you can check out the podcast. Uh, <laughs> one thing that will happen, though, is now that you're down in the Orlando area, once it becomes uh, winter here in Toledo, I might be knocking on your front door yeah. for a weekend. Hey, so. you know what? I got all the Thanks. stuff you need. I got all the stuff you need to broadcast live. Love it. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Hey, did well, I see, um, are you going to get the... Uh, Willie B, you're going to get, uh, you know, some of those famous people, uh, Broadway Bill Lee on the air. I would love to. I'm trying to. I would love to find out where Willie is. We've got a, We've got a crack staff of people, meaning Danny and myself, trying to email uh, people. We have a couple <laughs> of uh, big, big ones on the line. And and, 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 and I want to do a programming side as well. But uh, but yeah, those are if you if you can uh, if you know anybody that you think would be great on the podcast that you have contact information, just hang on when we get done. We'll we'll, we'll switch around. But yeah, I've, it's not all email. I mean, you know, the guy who started it all for us, Kimasabi Joe. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I messaged him on Facebook. I have not gotten a response. So maybe you can put in a good word. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But um, yeah, there's, you know, I, we can find some people. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Well, small, uh, Bob, small finders fee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's in, it's in the mail. We'll put yeah. it in the mail. <laughs> All right, Bob. Q103 t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> you have that in a husky. <laughs> if it's a radio T-shirt, they only come in one size, large. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's actually uh, on the way with your uh, best of Frederick plaque, so yes. it'll be, this, it'll be yes. the same box. <laughs> All right, Bob. Thank you thank very you much. It was a uh, super awesome, great, great interview. And of course, if you uh, hit share, like, and comment, we'd love to hear from you. That is the Rock and Bob Miller, the Morning Mayor. Love it. Oh, uh, off the record. Uh, off the air and on the record.